Blessed afternoon, souls. I didn't pull a reading this morning, and now it's the middle of the day, and I feel like, oh god, I want to do a reading right now. Right now. And it's super windy, and I am watching a squirrel clinging onto a tiny branch that's just blowing, blowing in the breeze, and that feels appropriate <laughs> and relatable. The sense of just hanging on to something, knowing that you gotta make a move. This, this isn't a comfortable place to be, but you're not sure quite where to go. All of these branches are pretty tiny. You just gotta trust yourself. You're gonna pick the right one. You're gonna pick one that's gonna hold you. And it's gonna get you where you need to go. <laughs> This is an in-between energy where we're in a void space after the full moon. And uh, whew, it's interesting. It's just, um, it's that interval feeling, the up in the air, the coin's been flipped and it's spinning. And nobody knows exactly what it's going to land on. But um, there felt like there was a pretty powerful message coming through that I was receiving a few moments ago about timing. And it's a, it's a complex one. It's not an easy lesson. It's, it's about spiritual growth and about acting on intuition, on your heart's desire, and how sometimes we feel prevented from doing that. And when we let ourselves stay in that headspace of, I want to, but I can't, then... Ultimately, the universe has to listen to your energy. And it depends which one resonates more. If your desire outweighs your belief that you can't, then it's going to win. It's still going to come in. But if you focus enough on that belief that you can't, that you're afraid maybe really convincing yourself that you don't want this. The universe has to listen. It has to listen to you. You are the creator. You call the shots. You create your own reality. And so there is a lesson about missing out on something that you could have had. That, that could have been yours. And it's more complex and nuanced than that, of course, because you never miss out on your destiny. <laughs> but it can change. It has to align with your energy. And so, if you have asked for something, manifested something, and by the time it gets to you, you no longer believe you want that thing. You do have the power to push it back out of your experience. Because the universe is not going to keep trying to give energy somewhere that it's not being received. That's how energy works. There has to be a place for it to flow. And if you insist on cutting that gap off on shorting that circuit on filling that void with something else then the universe says okay we respect your decision divine creator this blessing will flow somewhere that it is received and so you receive a lesson in its place which is still to your benefit all things are now 
the lesson is let it in. You have to decide. You make the choice. You consent to it or not. If you don't consent to your blessings, if you hold fast to this belief that you are not deserving or not worthy or that you really don't want it, that's all allowed. Ultimately, the universe will reach a tipping point where it sees you're not ready or willing to receive this. And the universe doesn't flow things where they're not wanted. It'll find a new path for that. Leaf just hit the window. The energy flows in the path of least resistance. If your path has so much resistance that you've placed upon it by your focus, things will be rerouted and other things are coming to you down the stream. It doesn't mean you don't get blessed. It doesn't mean you miss out on blessings. It just means you choose by your resistance to it. You are so free. You may choose bondage and continue to do so. The energy is doing everything it can right now to loosen that up. I am personally doing everything in my power, which cannot contradict free will. I can't change anyone else's free will. That is theirs. That is sovereign, sacred. And I wouldn't wish to tread upon it. I would not seek to step upon the path of another and change their journey. No, that is their growth, their learning, their healing, their expansion, their claiming of power, of love, their stepping into divinity. No one else can do that for me, and I would not desire to do that for anyone else. I am endeavoring to loosen the ties of karma as much as possible to assist with this. This is why I am allowing energy of the collective to express freely through me so that there is a small release of pressure in the hopes, in the desire that it may assist some in relieving resistance for themselves, but it still must be chosen by the self. I cannot do that for anyone else, nor can anyone do it for me. It starts within. But that feels like the message. Balance coming by endings. Things are trying to come in. This is already some powerful we're at four for four on Major Arcana. That's a, that's a royal flush right there. <laughs> Temperance crossed by death. Balance is trying to come. The energy is reconciling itself, but you are still the creator. You still have free will. You get to choose eternal life, perpetual progression, forward focus, or the opposite. All is allowed. There is no death. Everyone still <laughs> receives blessings, but you get to choose if your blessings are in the form of karmic lessons which are not bad. They are critically important for the growth of the soul. Or if you decide you are finished with your lessons, there will still be more to learn. Trust that. There will always be contrast. But you decide if you are ready, ready to let your blessings in. If you are ready to begin embodying the role 
of divine deliberate creator, of owning your energy, of accepting everything that comes to you as a part of your destiny and your soul's path and purpose. But only you can decide by your own intuition, by letting the soul lead. You have the option to withhold from yourself. The soul is trying desperately to awaken. And under this energy, for a great many people, there will not be another option because they have chosen this lifetime to awaken, to ascend. But there are many for whom this is just a step on the journey, and that is so beautiful and important. We all have had to learn this lesson. Every one of us souls. I know I have. I know I have. To act, not to withhold. Releasing, surrendering the outcome, and realizing, understanding the important thing was just to make the move was to trust the intuition, was to act on the desire, even if it didn't pan out in some way that you hoped, you still did it. You went for it, you listened to yourself, you honored yourself. Something I am very proud of myself in this lifetime is not holding back love, not withholding love from any other even when it put me in a position to be vulnerable, to be rejected, to be exposed, to feel all of the emotions. Every person I have ever felt feelings for, I have shared those. And some of it has been received and some of it has not. And all of that is irrelevant. I am proud, I am happy for every shot that I've taken. Withholding, fear of missing out. You cannot miss out on something that is truly a part of your destiny, but you can withhold blessings from yourself. and turn them into lessons. That is the only shift. This feels like most of the message, but I would like three cards from the universe. To see if there's anything else to speak on this. Pentacles came back out. Okay, the lesson is to follow the heart. Yeah, the offer not taken. The offer not taken out of fear, not intuition. The blessing not received that leaves one feeling this way. That's, wow. Five of Pentacles, King of Wands, and the Hierophant crossed by Four of Cups. This is the whole message summarized. And peeking off the top of the deck is the Ace of Cups reversed.
when emotion is withheld because of fear because of the ego because of of the pride that is of shadow because this is different from honoring the self the pride in the self the self is not honored by this kind of pride and spirit is teaching this when we stay in the box when we stay in the safe zone we ultimately only ever end up feeling left out keeping ourselves in the cold when we allow ego to stand in the way of offers coming in of the sharing of emotion of the expressing of self we are preventing our own soul growth, our own balancing, and that results in this feeling. When we do not share our truths, we do not grow. And we are here to grow, we are here to expand. The boundary is the burden. Ace of Cups reversed and Ten of Wands. This may be reversed too, actually. It's hard to tell, but it is still... When you let the cup flow, when you let the barriers fall away, you experience the soul growth. My cards are all over the place. I can't even tell. <sighs> Strength reversed. It is reversed. Wow, these came out all reversed. The lesson is to learn to be strong enough to release the boundaries and let that cup out into the open. When this offer is not made, when the strength is not found within, when the boundaries stay up and the cup stays protected and stagnant, this is what results. We stay in the box of ego that keeps us feeling left out, keeps us from feeling the connection, ultimately keeps us from connecting with the self. that is the whole point it's about connecting with yourself it's not even about this other person or this thing it's about expressing and the balance that brings to you as your own divine unlimited being learning how to trust the self, learning how not to hold back from the soul, to let the soul guide instead of ego. To allow the things that you have asked for, even if that means releasing. Sometimes this is the lesson. Sometimes the whole purpose of having a connection and not acting on it, not receiving it, is to learn from that and never again will that take place that heals a portion of the soul. Realizing what could be, what could have been if it had been believed. And that becomes empowering. It does not need to stay a regret. It becomes a fire, a realization that we have to take this journey. We have to act with authority for our own selves, act on our own authority, the highest, not listen to anybody else, not listen to shadow, 
but speak that truth. Take action when the timing is aligned, when it feels good. Not when it makes sense to the logical mind. When it feels good to make that offer. That is the time to do it. Only because the heart says, yes, if there is fear, then lean into it. You will know. If there is something you do not want to do, then don't do that thing. <laughs> you know it by that feeling of resistance, of forcing yourself. That is different from pushing through the limit of fear. There it is. When it is time to make the offer, you will know by the passion. You will know by the feeling of, I want to do this. If there is a but, touch it. <laughs> really, though. See what that but is. What is it that is holding you back? If it is fear, if it is something else, if it is... a wanting to remain in the comfort zone, if it is the advice of others saying they do not think you should do this, it is a mistake, listen to the passion. If there is not passion in it, then you know. You need not take that action. You're not missing out on something. And you can let it go. You can just let it pass you by and know you'll feel good about your own discernment in doing it. <laughs> That is the difference. You know when it is time to take that step, to make that offer, to make a bold move. You know when not to. Because it feels good always. If it feels good to act, if it is following your heart, act. If it feels good not to, then you are following your heart not to, and that is powerful. And either way you benefit, either way you know from your own discernment, nothing external, nothing else, that you have acted in alignment, and that you are flowing with destiny, and you are allowing all your blessings to come in. Act always in love of self. There are no limits to what this means. There are no rules. There is no guidebook. It means listening to yourself every moment, every second, checking in with your discernment. How do I feel? How good does this feel to me? And then acting. That is what it means by aligned energy. That is divine timing you created by aligning with yourself. <laughs> You're not waiting for something. You're not waiting on anything else. No, that is what shadow ego says. That's externalization. That's giving your power away. You decide. You align the energy within you. And what feels good you act upon. And that is your destined path. That is the path of highest good always whether it is an action taken or not. That is how you may know. That is how you may trust it. Let the soul lead. The heart and the soul work together. They are one. The heart is the soul. <laughs> you are love. You are light. Ask the mind to take a back seat. It's not there to guide you. It's there to give you feedback about the environment. That's it. It's not there to help you make a decision. It is the receptor. It is what allows you to connect to the higher levels of perception where conception takes place, where love exists eternally where you touch base with your true self your true being 
that which is all-encompassing, eternal, perfect. You receive that information, that feedback. You filter it through the heart with love. What is the thing that feels the most loving to me, the best to me, the most good feeling, most invigorating? What feels like growth to my soul? What feels like expansion? What feels like holding myself back? What feels like fear? What feels like peace? What feels like stability? By asking and discerning these things, then you may decide the direction. Let the soul guide you. Let it lead with love, which is light. The path lights up before you because it lights you up. You mutually attract each other. Your destiny and you flow together as one. It rises to greet you as you move forward into it and accept it beneath your feet. That is the message on this beautiful, blustery afternoon where all things are possible. Have a blessed day, souls. I absolutely, truly, really do love you. <laughs>